So are you feeling overwhelmed by the advice on what lenses to use for portrait photography? Well, you're not alone. Today, I'm here to cut through the confusion and give you the real scoop on portrait focal lengths. There's no one size fits all answer. You can use any focal length from wide to long, and I'm going to show you how. But if you're looking for that secret sauce to capturing these beautiful portraits, stick around. And in this video, I'll share my go-to focal lengths and explain why I choose them and even throw in some budget-friendly alternatives. So if you're ready to level up your portrait game, let's dive in together right now. Let's start off with my favorite storytelling lens, and that is the XF 23mm f1.4 WRLM. It's right here. I just bought it. It's right here, y'all. It is the lens I'm talking about. The 23mm f freaking This is it. Right here. Right here. Right here, I'm on. The 23mm f1.4 is a 35mm full frame equivalent, and it offers some very compelling in reasons uh, to be a portrait photography lens. Firstly, its wider field of view allows you to capture not just the subject, but also the surrounding environment. This adds depth and context to your images, helping the viewers connect with the story you're trying to tell through your portraits. Moreover, this focal length has a unique way of making your models appear taller and more flattering, which is often appreciated by your models. The XF 23mm f1.4 WRLM in particular stands out to me because of its sharpness and consistently delivering exceptional image quality. Some of my favorite shots have been crafted using this lens, which speaks to its reliability and its performance. One standout feature of this lens is its close minimum focusing distance, which is just 19 centimeters. While you may not always need to shoot that close, it provides the flexibility to get closer to your subject when needed, especially when combined with the wide aperture of f1.4. This allows you to achieve beautiful background blur or bokeh, which can lend a dreamy and artistic touch to your portrait. Additionally, the lens autofocusing capabilities, especially when paired with the X-T5, ensures that you you can capture those fleeting moments with precision and ease. Overall, the 23mm f1.4 lens is a versatile and dependable choice for portrait photography, offering not only sharpness and great image quality, also the creative freedom to explore various angles and compositions with confidence. Now, if you're working with a budget, don't worry, there are some fantastic lens options out there that won't break the bank. Let me put you guys on some game right here. First up, we got the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 a lens that comes highly recommended by many photographers. While I haven't personally used it, it's earned a reputation for its performance. Next up, there's the XF 23mm f2, which I've had the pleasure of using myself. It's a reliable choice that gets the job done, and as an added bonus, it's uh, more budget-friendly than its uh, f1.4 counterpart. Speaking of f1.4 version, there's also the original 23mm f1.4, which can often be found at an excellent price in the used market. This lens holds a special place in my heart, and this lens was the one that convinced me to give the 23mm focal length another chance. For those who want to explore further, there's a new Sigma 23mm f1.4 for the Fujifilm X-Mount. Although I haven't had hands-on experience with it, if it's anything like any other Sigma lenses out there that I've tried, it's likely to be a fantastic performer at an affordable price, as Sigma lenses often are. And if you are interested in manual lenses, you can check out the Lawa 25mm f0.95, and I'll add it in this category as well. And if you're on a budget and you don't care about the size of the lens, I'm going to add this lens here as well. We have the Viltrox 27mm f1.2. This lens is amazing. It is sharp, it's clean, and that f1.2 with autofocusing at this price is unheard of. You're getting a great lens that performs like a native lens. The next lens that I like to use is the XF 33mm f1.4, and that is a 15mm full frame equivalent. Right here, my one of my favorites. I can't decide nowadays, always jumping back and forth. The 33mm focal length is a uh, often referred to as the nifty 50 in the world of photography. It is a popular choice for beginners due to its affordability and versatility. For me, I have a soft spot for this focal length because it's been with me from the very beginning of my photography journey. It's become second nature to me and I often see compositions through a 50 millimeter perspective. What makes this focal length special to me is the ability to deliver a natural look. On a full frame camera, a 50 millimeter lens closely mimics the perspective of the human eye resulting in portraits that feels relatable and creates intimate connection with the viewers. Another advantage is the slight background compression. While it's not as pronounced as longer focal lengths, it's sufficient to achieve background separation that coveted bokeh effect when needed. Now let's talk about the XF 33mm f1.4 lens. It's a gem offering fantastic bokeh and outstanding image quality. The autofocusing is snappy, it's weather resistant, and its compact size makes it an ideal travel companion. However, if the XF 33mm f1.4 stretches beyond your budget, Consider these alternatives. We have the Viltrox 33mm f1.4. Many photographers praise it, but be aware of 
of potential chromatic aberration issues, do some research if you're interested. The older XF 35mm f1.4, you can often find this at a great price in the used market. And despite its age and less than stellar autofocus, it remains a beautiful lens that can capture stunning shots. The XF 35mm f2, this lens has a quick autofocusing, and it has a sharp and clean images, and it has a compact design compared to others I mentioned. If you're feeling adventurous, you might even explore the f0.95 lenses. These manual lenses offer unique image possibilities due to their wide apertures. I've created a video where I discuss various 35mm f0.95 lenses that I've tried. And if you're interested, you can watch it here somewhere to learn more about it. There's also the XC 35mm f2 lens, and this is a budget-friendly lens as well. It has the same optics as the XF 35mm f2, but with cheaper materials. And there is no weather sealing like the XF version. Now let's talk about compression lenses. The mid telephoto and the telephoto lenses that I rely on to achieve that dreamy background compression and, and it's the ultimate bokeh effect. And today I'm excited to introduce you to two remarkable lenses, the 56mm f1.2 WR which I have right here, you got right here baby, Look. and the 90mm f2. Although they have different focal lengths, they, they both work wonders for me in a similar way. The 56mm f1.2 WR is a recent addition to my lens collection and I've been thoroughly impressed with its image quality since the first time I had the opportunity to use it. The level of sharpness it delivers is truly outstanding. That wide f1.2 aperture proves to be a lifesaver in low light situations. I've taken this lens out for a nighttime photography and it was nothing short of fantastic, especially when I needed that extra light gathering capability. With a full frame equivalent focal length of 85mm, the 56mm is your go-to choice for shooting headshots. Why you ask? Well, it has the magical power to flatten the image, making your subject's face look incredibly flattering. In contrast, a wider focal length like the 23mm can introduce distortion and can create less flattering appearance. I turn to the 56mm when I want to capture the raw emotions of my models, delves into the intricate details or simply achieve superb subject isolations. Now let's talk about the 90mm f2 which shares similar attributes and the reasons why I love to use it. It delivers impeccable image quality. In fact, it might just be the best image quality that I've experienced. I even nicknamed this lens the cinematic lens because there's a distinct cinematic quality to the images that it produces. But here's a tip, be mindful of your shooting space when using the 90mm. It offers a tight frame make, making it a highly specialized lens that's worth considering only if you genuinely need the reach that it provides. Now if you're looking for more budget friendly options out there, here are some alternatives to these lenses. You got the Sigma 56mm f1.4, it's not as wide open as the f1.2. Uh, the Sigma still delivers impressive results. This Sigma lens is compact, sharp, and it's and known for its consistent image quality and contrast. Plus, it's attractively priced at $429, making it a budget-friendly choice compared to the 90mm f2 and the 56mm f1.2. You should also consider the older 56mm f1.2. Look for it on the used market to snag a fantastic deal with some bargaining skills. It's an excellent lens with a lot of potential. Also, the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 1.2 Pro. Priced at just $549, this lens is an affordable f1.2 option that delivers pro-level optics. Viltrox has been impressing the Fujifilm community with their releases as of late, and this lens is no exception, providing sharpness on par with the best Fujifilm native lenses out there. And let's not forget the Fujifilm 50mm f2. This is an underrated gem that not many people talk about. This lens is incredibly sharp, it boasts micro contrast, and is compact compared to the others in this category. And for those who are interested in manual lenses, check out the Mikey 50mm f0.95 lens or the TT Artisan's 50mm f0.95 lens. While they may not be optically perfect, they offer a budget-friendly entry point to the world of mid-telephoto compression. Albeit with some contrast and softness issues, it's a great way to dip your toes into manual lenses photography. Before we wrap it up, I just want to acknowledge that investing in multiple prime lenses for different focal lengths can get quite expensive, especially if you're just starting out and exploring your preferences. It, and again, it all adds up. However, if you're currently in a position where you can only afford one lens, and still want to explore various focal lengths, I have a game-changing su suggestion for you. Consider getting a zoom lens. Here's a trick that I did. Shoot with that zoom lens for, uh, for some time, okay? For uh, like a month, two months, a year. 
and then import your photos into Lightroom. Lightroom's metadata can reveal which focal length you use the most, helping you pinpoint your preferred focal length. And once you have that insight, you, you can make a more informed decision about which prime lenses to invest next. Now let's take a quick look at some standard zoom lenses that I believe are worth considering for the Fujifilm x -Mount. First, there is the trusty Fujifilm XF 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. This is a popular choice within the community offering optical image stabilization, OIS, despite its variable aperture. There's also an XC zoom lens for the budget conscious folks out there. Just know that I've never used this lens before, so I recommend you guys doing your research, but it'll be a great starter lens to have if, if your funds are limited. And then we have the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter F2.8, which is my top recommendation. It's compact, it's lightweight, and boasts a constant F2.8 aperture. While it lacks OIS, the constant aperture and the excellent image quality makes it a compelling option at just $549. Another contender is the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter f2.8. I haven't personally tried this lens, but it has garnered high praises for its image quality and its constant f2.8. It's slightly bulkier than the Sigma, so there's a trade-off for those extra focal lengths that you're going to get. If you're ready to go all in, consider the Fujifilm XF 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8. This lens is a powerhouse and it's incredibly sharp and it offers exceptional performance. While it comes with a hefty price tag of $1,200, it's an investment that's going to pay off in versatility and in image quality. And I can personally vouch for this lens capabilities. All right, these are some of my favorite lenses for capturing flattering portraits. I hope you gain some valuable insights into different focal lengths. Remember, these are just guidelines and they're not really strict rules. Feel free to experiment with various focal lengths. Even me, I've even shot portraits with the unconventional choices like the like the Fujifilm XF 14mm f2.8. I shot portraits with the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 and then the Fujifilm XF 10 to 24mm f4. While it's more challenging, creativity can yield fantastic fantastic results. So if you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing for more Fujifilm content, photography tips and tricks. If any of the lenses I've mentioned piqued your interest, you can find a list below for reference. And I would love to hear your thoughts and learn about the lenses you use for your portrait photography. So please share them in the comments below. And thank